at all these pretty shells here. I've seen a bunch of these washing up right now. You don't see this very often, these kind of shells, but it's pretty cool. What I'm noticing is that they're full shells and they're empty. So, <laughs> namaste to everyone that's joining that's able to see me still on Facebook. My name's Greg Prescott from in5d.com and zentasia.com. Osprey flew right in front of us. What's up, buddy? So today, gosh, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> I think it's Tuesday, <laughs> if nothing else. But it's kind of chilly out here today, you know, all things considered, this is Florida. And uh, chilly for us is in the 60s, which it probably is right now. It's probably, I don't know, 65 out or so. And people are bundled up on the beach. Right there. There's a bunch of them in the sky. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. It's chilly out here though. <laughs> uh, there's a dead minnow. That's not good. But yeah, today is something unusual. I'm seeing all these different kinds of shells washing up. And they're they're empty. But they're all kind of, uh, you know, these kind of mollusk, clam-like shells are washing up on the beach. There's another one right here. Which is unusual. We don't usually see this many full shells like this washing up on the beach. They're pretty. I grabbed one for my shell collection. Just something unusual for Siesta Key. I have a boat down here that washed ashore, gosh, almost two weeks ago, I think. And I'm surprised that it hasn't tipped over. Maybe about six months ago, five, six, six months ago, there was a boat that was up there, a little further north on the beach. I was sitting out like that, just kind of uh, stranded. And uh, it ended up capsizing. It, when the high tide came in, it tipped it over, but this one is pretty much <laughs> going nowhere. And it's been there, like I said, it's close to two weeks that it's been there. Quick shout out, good morning to those who are able to see me. As you guys know, I've been Blocked, throttled, shadow banned <laughs> on Facebook. So, you know, I'm grateful for whoever's able to see this. So, uh, Leona, Jennifer, Mike, Peggy. I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> Anne Marie, another name I can't pronounce. Um, ben, Tracy, Rhonda. Namaste, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. You are looking live at Siesta Key Beach, and today, look at this big old osprey right in front of me. What's up, buddy? What you doing, bud? He's walking right up to us. <laughs> the water looks really good today. We have uh, some waves going on here. watercolor looks much better. There's a slight smell of red tide in the air, but not too bad. 
I was reading a local meteorologist on his report and he was saying that there's, you know, the red tide is pretty much down by Sanibel Island right now. And there's an 18 mile swath of it there. But outside of that, for the three counties from there up, uh, I guess Collier, Lee, Sarasota, and Manatee County, I guess four, four counties, uh, everything's looking pretty good right now. Hopefully the cooler temperatures and the cooler water temperatures are going to help eliminate this red tide. It's probably one of the reasons why I got blocked because I was telling the truth about red tide. And once again, I'll reiterate because it is the truth. This is highly uncommon. Red tide usually lasts maybe seven to 10 days here in Florida. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Looks like you got any food? But every time they dump from Okeechobee, Lake Okeechobee into uh, either the St. Lucie River, which dumps out into the Atlantic side, or the Caloosahatchee River, which dumps out here in the Gulf. Every time they do that, they let water out from the Lake Oke Okeechobee. There's red tide killings. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out one plus one equals two. One thing I've been noticing, if you're just tuning in, are all of these shells. They're really pretty that have washed up on the beach. They're empty. So if you're in the area, they make great souvenirs. But there's, it's not just that one kind of shell. We're seeing this shell, once again, a full shell, which is odd. You don't really see the full shells like this washed up on the beach. So just making note of that. Here's another one. All sorts of different kinds of mollusk type shells washed up on the beach. Fortunately, there aren't any large dead fish to make note of. I did see one minute back there. There's a deal needle. I call them deedle needles. They're really called sandpipers. But when they run, their legs go really fast. It sounds like they should be making the sound. <laughs> I love them. They make me smile. There he goes. Those big ospreys are quite friendly. Usually they don't let you get this close to them. He's finding something to eat there, or she. What's up, buddy? What you doing? <laughs> no, I don't have anything for you. So we got this boat up here, as I mentioned. It's been up there for a couple weeks. Just stranded. stolen and they ran drugs with it or something I don't know what they why it's there but it's there and it's been there for close to two weeks there's some more of those shells that are just full full shells nothing in them just strewn across the beach <laughs> this guy's going swimming oh my god it's cold out to begin with the water's cold and he's going in Yeah, that's an old carver boat. At one point, it was probably pretty nice. So yeah, I've got my thermal shirt on because <laughs> it's cold here. <laughs> it is cold, it's probably 65-ish, but when you're from, from Florida, or at least if you live here, this is cold. <laughs> so it, it is official, you know, I've been corresponding with Facebook and they've been 
they gave me no answers on why they've been blocking me, why I've been throttled, shadow banned, whatever. They basically came out and did, admitted it and closed the case. So, the good news is that recently I was on a show with Todd Medina and Michelle Walling, and Todd is setting up a website where it's going to be kind of like you can have your own own space there it's for spiritual uh, people websites individuals whatever but you can have your own space there you can do your videos there oh that's pretty <laughs> I'll leave it for somebody else but um yeah and uh I think it's going to be something huge. So I'll keep you guys posted on this um, as more uh, develops on it. But it's really exciting and it's something that will not be censored. <laughs> we'll be able to get our voices heard through this idea. Um, I'm going to be learning a little bit more about it myself and as I learn more about it, I'll be passing it along to you guys. So. Um, that's really exciting news. As far as I'm concerned, Facebook is going to be become the next MySpace. It's going to be a dinosaur, you know, the way they're treating people, and you know, especially those of us that are putting out positive messages that they're suppressing and banning. So there is hope. There's something positive that is happening. So I'll keep you posted on that. Here's some more uh, deedle deedles. <laughs> so I haven't been doing any updates because they have been throttling and shadow banning me so badly, but you know what? I actually see 27 people here, which is below what I would normally get before I was throttled and shadow banned, but it's not as bad as what I've seen the last couple live recordings that I did, which we only had like three or four people, so. That's good. Uh, Leona's asking, what about MeWe? Well, my computer, my main computer died and I'm using an old computer right now. I can't get onto me, MeWe. <laughs> and until I get a new computer that I can even access MeWe with. I don't know. MeWe's a decent platform, but there's a lot of shady kind of people there. Uh, this one group, Love Has Won, uh, shady as fuck. Uh, oh, there's another full shell but they would uh, raid basically my chat that I had on on MeWe and just sit there and I got so many people that would tell me that you know they were using this you know black magic or whatever on them while they were in there at the chat so I ended up banning them and booting them all and uh, so but if you want to learn more about that just go type in LH LHW and reddit in Google and you'll find out a little about, bit more about their cult. But yeah, um, that's the kind of dark energy that ends up going there. So we're looking at starting up something that's much more positive and uh, will still give us the ability to do videos and share information with each other without censorship, which is huge. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help Todd, you know, myself being a webmaster and knowing a little bit about this stuff, I'm all in. And I'll be passing that along to you guys. As soon as I get more information, you guys will know too. Yes, thank you, Dijon, Dijean, Dijean, Dijon. <laughs> D-E-J-E-A-N. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but yeah. L-H-W, Reddit. Reddit with two Ds, I believe. R-E-D-D-I-T in Google. So yeah, check that out. Aw, thanks, Marie. 
I miss actually being on here too. Where he's saying, oh, I miss you, I miss you guys too. It's been a lot going on um, in the past few weeks that I haven't been on. Been trying to keep everyone updated, but yeah, the main thing was the conversation back and forth with Facebook support that basically told me nothing. <laughs> they couldn't answer any of my questions about why I was throttled and shadow banned, why my N5D Facebook page has you know 430,000 likes and yet I can only reach you know several hundred people at a time. It's obvious what's going on and it's all going to collapse. <laughs> and I've been saying this since I've been talking about Pluto and Capricorn and for those that aren't aware of what Pluto in Capricorn is, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008. Pluto is known as the destroyer and it will tear down everything that's not in humanity's best interests. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn was during both the French and American revolutions and if you look what, at what's going on in France, guess what? Revolution, to no surprise saw this coming and of course you know with this whole QAnon thing that we have here in the United States not a revolution, but it's a peaceful one and they're both peaceful this time it's different so the, the, the energy and the vibration of truth love and light are just so powerful right now that there's nothing we can't we can't do that won't be successful everything even if we have to take a step backwards or a few steps backwards which I've talked about um, since I've been talking about Pluto and Capricorn it's very well possible that we might have to take a step backwards before we take this humongous quantum leap forward as uh, Q mentioned in one of the latest Q drops he was talking about the Federal Reserve and how they're going to uh, be pumping up the interest rates in 2019 uh, to make Trump look bad and so on and so forth but <laughs> but what they uh, aren't talking about is how Trump's in the process of auditing the Fed I believe and that there probably will be some sort of reset that goes on so imagine this you know, if, if there was a financial reset, especially if it was a reset to a gold standard, then they would have to essentially readjust everything, the prices of everything. So let's say hypothetically a gallon of milk costs $6, right? Well, if there was a financial reset, then a gallon of milk would be $1. And using the same theory with the same numbers if there was a house selling for 600,000 it would go for a hundred thousand so we're looking at that kind of possibility where you know if you guys have any silver which now would be the time to buy it because it's they've suppressed the prices of silver and gold for, for so long now would be the time to buy it and you'd probably be set Fortunately, you know, years ago, that's what I did when I had a little extra money. I, I bought some silver and junk silver, which are like uh, coins here in the United States, coins that are 1964 or, or older, which have a 90% melt value, which means 90% of the coin is silver. So you can even, you know, nowadays you'll, you'll still find quarters if you're here in the United States. Go through your quarters and see if you have any 1964, 1963. You will find them still. But those are 90% silver. So, you know, if the shit does hit the fan, if there is a, a delay, if the, we do have to take a step backwards, that's where that junk silver comes in handy. So say hypothetically, I have a silver dime and it's worth $3. I can barter that for, you know, a loaf of bread or some eggs or something like that. You know, you got something to barter with. You can't do a diddly with a, <laughs> you know, a $1,600 gold coin or, you know, a, a, an ounce of silver. That's not going to 
do you too, too much good. But that's why it's important to have those, like what they call junk silver. But I've said it, you know, we have to take a step backwards before we take a huge leap forward. And I have a feeling it's going to be a very smooth transition. There's nothing to fear within this process. But everything that's going on around us is all built on lies and negativity, corruption, and it all has to collapse. I mean, look at here in the United States, great example. We have cars that same, you know, I'll just use the Ford Escort as an example. And I'm just throwing these numbers out here as an example. I don't know the specific numbers, but let's say the Ford Escort here in the United States gets 30 miles a gallon. In Europe, the same car gets like 50 or 60 miles per gallon. But it's the EPA that limits the amount of miles per gallon that we get here in the United States thus screwing us and forcing us to use more gas and support the petrodollar. When none of this is even necessary, we could have, you know, Stanley Meyer talked about this. He proved it was true. In the late 1980s, he showed us a car that could go from coast to coast on 21 or 22 gallons of water. It didn't matter if it was seawater, tap water, lake water, urine, it didn't matter. Compressed snow. Yeah, you put that in the car, you're good to go. Um, so yeah, oil, we don't need the oil, the petrodollar, it's BS. It's backed by nothing, it's fiat currency, and it, it, it has to collapse. Um, even if you think about, well, you still need tires for your car, or you still need oil for you know the lubrication of the motor and stuff. No, you don't, not, not that kind of oil or that kind of tire. As a matter of fact, I just heard about this 3D tire that they they said they, they just started coming out with, a 3D printer tire that needs nothing, lasts forever. <laughs> so there you go for tires. You don't need the oil to make rubber for tires. And as for the oil, once again, let's turn to, to our buddy hemp, that Henry Ford made a car out of hemp. Hemp has been proven to be much more durable than steel. Uh, a lot of people are using hempcrete in houses, which is, I forgot how many times more durable than concrete. So you have hemp that you can make the oil from to lubricate the engines, and I'm sure it would last even longer than the traditional crap oil that we have that we need to run our cars with. So yeah, things probably will have to collapse and we're watching it happen all around us. Now, getting back to Pluto and Capricorn, Pluto entered Capricorn in, 20, uh, in 2008. It stays there until 2023. So right now we're already over the midpoint, the apex, and uh, we're cruising in to 2023 with a lot of momentum. And the vibration of truth is really what is ultimately tearing down everything that's not in humanity's best interests. So we'll continue to see this as it goes on, as we head towards 2023. We're gonna, and as I predicted way back when, we're gonna see uh, the collapse of money, government, and religion. We're seeing that in all three areas. Uh, money, the, they're already talking about it, you know, uh, the auditing the Fed, the US is the global currency, and that's gonna be shot to shit. Uh, government, we're watching that collapse as the swamp is being drained and religion, all these pedophiles are being exposed and all the corruption that's going on in the Roman Catholic Church. Hypothetically, the Roman Catholic Church has enough net worth to feed, clothe, and shelter everybody on this planet. So you gotta ask yourself, why is there starvation? Why is there hunger? Why isn't the, why isn't the Roman Catholic Church living by the word of their texts? Corruption, that's why. That's the vibration of truth, love, and light, my friends. And, and as we watch it all collapse, know that there is a plan in place. You know, a lot of us are hearing these high-pitched frequencies that are bringing in downloads. And as we're finding out, each, as I post on In5D each day, I, I post the latest uh, frequency that I'm hearing. 
so many other people are hearing them and it's in the exact same key. As a matter of fact, when I was doing that interview with Todd Medina, Todd was talking and all of a sudden I had to get up and grab my guitar because I had this loud high pitched frequency coming into my right ear. And I got back and I figured out the frequency and what the, what the key was. And I, I, I told him and his viewers about that. And all of a sudden everyone else said, yeah, I hear it too. I hear it too. In the right ear, same key, same tone. We're all hearing it. Well, most of us, many of us are hearing it. Some people will feel it. You know, something's happening. Something's changing right now. And it's huge. And we're all on the cusp of something magnanimous. So, quick shout out to uh, another name I can't pronounce. I'll skip to the next one. <laughs> Julianne Etoy, Etoy, Rashmi, <laughs> Tracy Kamara, Linda Clark. Who else we got here? Trinity. Namaste. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. So yeah, there's some exciting plans in the making right now for a website that will, you won't want to come back to Facebook anymore after this. We're, we're, I don't know about you, but I am so tired of the censorship that's going on here. And I'm grateful that I'm able to at least have a, a live recording right now with 38 people. But I can tell you that in the past, when I've done live recordings, I, I would have at a minimum like 80 and usually over 100 people. So that's just a quick update of what's going on here in Sarasota, Siesta Key, Florida. If you're just tuning in, yeah, I've got a flannel shirt on or a thermal shirt. It's chilly out here, it's maybe 65 degrees. Wind's blowing out of the north, northeast, which is a cool wind. And uh, we have all these shells that we're finding on the beach today, full shells, um, as if the, whatever was in them is no longer in them. And uh, it's very unusual. I'm just walking, here's, here's one right here. Here's a baby one, a baby, uh, so that's kind of cute. I think I'll keep that one. But yeah. So it's like a, an anomaly that I haven't seen ever here on Siesta Key. This kind of um, shell showing that we have. And different kinds of shells. It's not just the same. It's not just the same shell. It's many different shells that are whole, whole and full, but yet there's no inhabitants inside. Water looks really good. It's probably cold, but I have been seeing terns diving in for minnows, which is a positive sign. So the water is clearing up here. Um, the weather is still chilly for Florida. Although, if it's cold here, it's much colder everywhere else, so... Bundle up! <laughs> so, I'm gonna leave it off at that. Um, I'll keep you guys posted on this website that's getting built, that's gonna be for everyone. Individuals, people that have spiritual websites. It's, from my understanding, it is just a spiritual genre website, so... I would imagine that even truthers that expose the negativity in order to bring people to the light because a lot of us started out as truthers and eventually we start questioning not just our physical reality but our spiritual reality and why am I here what is my purpose you know that kind of thing so I hope that they do have truthers on there too because they're playing a huge role in this great awakening that's going on right now so I'm gonna leave it off at that if you haven't already, please like and share this video. And uh, also subscribe to In5D, whether it's the weekly or the daily newsletter. 
because that way you'll stay up to date with everything. You won't miss a thing. I think today I posted like five articles, four or five articles on N5D. So check that out. Make sure you subscribe. And uh, I'll leave it off with that. So until the next time, I'm not sure when that will be, but hopefully sooner than it was for the last video. This is Greg from N5D.com and Zentasia.com sending you all infinite love and light. Peace.